everybody, Scott Allen Miller here. Today on Sam IT, we're going to continue with our RAID discussion, and we're going to look at what is RAID 7 today. Now, in our last one, we talked about RAID 6, which can also be called RAID 5.2, which is dual parity, but using the same basic parity mechanism that RAID 5 used with single parity. RAID 7, which can also be called RAID 5.3, is the logical continuation of that. It is triple parity using the same variable stripe that, or I'm sorry, variable uh, uh, distributed stripe that uh, RAID 5 uses and that RAID 6 uses. And like I said in the RAID 6 video, the reason that we took so long to get to RAID 7, we didn't get it until the mid-2000s, uh, was that the math needed to make a triple parity bit was really hard and it wasn't very useful up until about that point. You don't really want it until you have very large arrays because the computational overhead of doing triple parity gets extremely high. You need a lot of CPU power somewhere in order to do that much calculation. Each one gets quite a bit more than the one before. So RAID 7 uses a lot of power that RAID 6 does not need, and RAID 6 uses a lot that RAID 5 does not need, and RAID 5 uses a lot that RAID 1 does not need. Each one grows quite a bit. Now, it's worth noting that with RAID 7, this is unlike RAID 0, 1, 5, and 6, which are available on essentially all controllers and all software RAID uh, Im uh, implementations across the board. You almost can assume that you will always have them. RAID 7 is so rare that there is currently, at the time of this video, and for the last nearly 15 years, only a single implementation anywhere, and that is in the ZFS from Oracle, or OpenZFS um, product that came from that software RAID subsystem under the brand name RAID Z3. This is, quite literally, the only RAID 7 implementation that there is anywhere. So while it's an important RAID level, and it does get used rather a bit, it comes only from that one really special circumstance. And so it's difficult to separate RAID 7, the technology, from RAID Z3, the implementation. And it's very common for people to get them confused because RAID 7 has some details that are very predictable based on how RAID 5 and RAID 6 are, but RAID Z3 adds its own implementation details that since they're always there, people just assume are a part of RAID 7, which isn't exactly true, but might as well be in the real world. But most people don't have access to RAID 7. It is limited at this time and for the foreseeable future to very special implementations of storage subsystems where you have most likely got an expert involved. That's how you got into the situation where you can have RAID 7 in the first place. Casual users and people doing normal implementations of anything requiring storage won't have access to RAID 7, so it doesn't really come up. But it is important to note what it is why it works, and in the future, if implementations of it do get created, which are proposed, it may be something that is more accessible to the general IT public for more normal workloads in the next few years. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe, and as always, you can sponsor us on Patreon.